We talked about Brother Ray Lynch. That's spelled L-E-N-T-Z-S-C-H. German background, his family came to America, I believe just after the First World War, and Ray was raised in a nominal Lutheran home, but gloriously saved, as we talked about in a previous story. But I want to tell you just a little interesting incident in his life when he traveled to the land of Israel to preach the gospel there. He was challenged and encouraged by the words of Matthew 10, 23, which say, But when they persecute in this city, flee ye unto another. For verily I say to you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And so he felt this was a great encouragement. And at first it was quite difficult, but listen, listen to what he says. He was traveling with a young Jewish believer named Ricky, who was his translator. And he says, as Ricky and I began preaching from city to city, every time we preached, we were stoned, beaten, caught up in tumults or jailed. Only in nearly all Arab lower Nazareth did we preach unhindered. Now, they had begun in Jerusalem and they were working north up into the Galilee and eventually they were arrested and they were charged with holding an illegal street meeting. Although there is supposedly freedom of speech in Israel, they were supposed to have some sort of permission if the crowd grew to more than 10 people. <laughs> and so they were put into prison. They were moved from one prison to another, ended up in Ramley, which is just north of Jerusalem, and it was a much better situation. But as time went by, Ricky decided that maybe this wasn't the best career path for him. He had a young lady that he was hoping to marry, and so he decided that he would be involved perhaps in a different ministry other than this one, which seemed to be fraught with danger and hardship. At the same time, Ray felt that he needed to prove God. He didn't want to be doing this in the energy of the flesh. He wanted to be sure that he was doing this according to the will of God. And so, as a kind of fleece, he filled out his visa application with the question, what was his occupation as missionary? Which, of course, is a red flag in Israel. And then, to the question, why do you want to stay in Israel? His answer was to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for there is no salvation in any other name. The man in the office, the government office, took this document, read it, his eyes grew wide. He took it over to an Orthodox Jew who was his superior and showed it to the man. As the man read it, he put his head back and began to laugh uproariously. And he said, well, I'll be. This is the first one that ever told the truth. And so he proceeded to give Ray a year's extension on his visa <laughs> to carry out of the gospel. You know, when you think about uh, the work of God around the world, we sometimes in this part of the world think, you know, things are tough if we get a smirk or a laugh or a jibe. But God's people around the world are facing tremendous opposition. Well, there are many Christians in places like India who go out and preach the gospel and don't know if they'll get home safely. If we were doing more of that kind of gospel work, I think we'd have more of that kind of opposition. I remember staying all night with a man up in Grand Rapids. He was from the retirement home there and he had some serious health problems. He was in the hospital. I stayed with him all night. And he told me how in the early days he would go and preach the gospel in downtown Detroit. And he would tell his wife where he was going to be in case he didn't get home. And so she would know where to send the policeman to look for his body. So this is real, even in this country. And I said to him that next morning they discovered that he had gallstones and kidney stones and all sorts of problems. And he must have been in agonizing pain. And I said, brother, I mean, you never complained a bit. He said, well, I spent a winter in Siberia in an unheated cabin. And he said, after that, you don't complain. 
You know, we've had it so easy in this part of the world that when we get the slightest pushback, we feel like we need to retreat. But you'll see the early Christians, the only prayer that is recorded in the book of Acts by that little company, not that they prayed, they often prayed, but the actual prayer that they prayed was a prayer after they had been beaten and been told that they should never preach in the name of Jesus. They gathered together, they went to their own company, and they prayed for boldness so that they might redouble their efforts in the gospel. And in their own words, they said, we ought to obey God rather than men. We should submit to every ordinance of man, but when we are forbidden to preach the gospel, we need to just go ahead and take our licks for the sake of the Lord Jesus. How thankful we should be that many of God's people down through the centuries have been willing to risk their lives so that the gospel could come to our quiet and comfortable world, to where we live. But may God help us to act boldly, to speak clearly, to lovingly and wisely proclaim the gospel while we still have freedom in this part of the world. And may we pray earnestly for the Christians who are living in places of tremendous opposition, but they might have boldness and safety and, and success, spiritual success, in seeing others one for the Savior.